Okay, so far with doing integrals, we have not learned how to do two functions that are multiplied together. So for chapter 3, section 1, that's what we're going to start working on. So this is what we call integration by parts, and it is going to be addressing questions in this format. So we have the integral of x sine x dx. We've not been able to do that unless we've had a calculator or use something online up until now. So to, do, to show you what that equation is, I'm going to derive it for you. So we're going to start off with h of x equals f of x times g of x. And this is going to go back to integration for a minute. So remember back in integrals, or sorry, <laughs> derivatives. Back when we did derivatives, we had h prime of x is equal to two functions that are being multiplied together. So we would have to use the product rule. So we would d do g of x times f prime of x plus f of x times g prime of x. Okay, so that was our derivative. Now we want to take that into integrals. So let's integrate our derivative, h prime of x dx. And then on the right-hand side, we would have the integral of g of x f prime of x dx and then plus the integral of f of x g prime of x dx. All right now uh, if we take the integral of the derivative we just get back right back to h of x. So this is really equal to h of x. Well what did we say h of x was equal to? Back up here we said h of x is equal to f of x times g of x. So let's rewrite that. So instead of h of x, I'm going to write f of x g of x is equal to the integral of g of x times f prime of x dx plus the integral of f of x g prime of x dx. Okay, and now we are going to solve for this one, this integral right here. And then this is going to give a formula of how we can find the integral of two equations that are multiplied together. Also notice that one of them is a an original function, one of them is a derivative and that is going to come into play into our equations. So we've got the integral of f of x g prime of x dx is equal to, so we're solving for this, so we're going to now take f of x g of x and subtract this first integral. So that's equal to f of x g of x, and also notice your relationships here. This f of x is the same f of x as this, and the g prime of x is the derivative of this g out here. So f of x, g of x, um, minus the integral of g of x, f prime of x, dx. Okay, so now I have solved for this integral, and now we have some sort of an of a formula to find integrals of functions that are multiplied together. Now let's write it out in our formula mode. This is going to be the integral of u dv equals, now we're down to here, u times v minus the integral of v du. And that is our new formula that we're going to work with this uh, next couple of assignments. And this is what we call integration by parts. All right, so here are our equations written a little bit nicer, the definition for integration by parts. So what we do is we let u equal f of x and v equal g of x, be functions with continuous derivatives. Then the integration by parts formula for the integral involving these two functions is the integral of u dv which is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. 
So our first example, I didn't give myself very much room here, did I? Um, we're going to go ahead and, and integrate what we were talking about here at the beginning. So using integration by parts. So use integration by parts with u equaling x and dv equaling sine of dx. So every time, they're not going to tell you what u and dv is. You do have one question that asks you what you would use for u. Uh, but this is going to be your setup. So we want to know what u is. We want to know what du is. We want to know v. And we want to know dv. These are all of everything that we need to know to write our answer. We need u, v, v, and du. Okay. The original problem is going to give us u. And it's also going to give us dv. So from our original problem, we need to pick out a u. And we also need to pick out a dv. Um, so best thing to do is you want to pick, so my two equations are x and sine of x. Those are my two equations. So if I put x in here for u, when I take the derivative of x, I get 1 dx. So it actually makes it better. Okay. So if we can make our equations smaller, less variables, uh, take down um, exponent, something like that, that's what we want to do. So I'm going to pick my u as x so that it will sim be simplified when we take our derivative. Okay. So I chose u to be x. That means dv is going to be have to be sine x dx. Right. So it's kind of hard to understand what we're doing here and why, uh, but it's all because of our formula. Our formula says we're integrating u dv. So now I said x is u, sine of x dx is dv, so now I have it in the right format to be able to use um, our uh, integration by parts. Okay, so I already did my derivative, so my next step would be to go in, take my derivative of u, so derivative of x is 1 dx. Now I need to integrate my dv to find what v is. So the integral of sine x is negative cosine of x. And yeah, you could say like a plus c. We are going to have to factor that into our answers as well. Uh, yeah. So derivative cosine is negative sine, so we need to have a negative. All right, now we're go ahead, ready to go ahead and use the right-hand side of our formula. So this integral of x sine x dx is equal to u times v. So u is x, v is negative cosine x. So uv minus the integral of v, so that's going to make it a plus cosine x, v du, which is 1 dx. All right, so now we've got a little more work we can do. Now we need to integrate cosine. Well, the integral of cosine is uh, sine x. So we've got a negative there. So we're going to end up with negative x cosine x. That's all going to stay. And then we're going to have plus sine of x, then plus c. And then we are done with that example. All right, how do we choose U? So there is a little acronym that we can use that helps us decide what we're going to use for choose for U. So we're going to have two equations that are being multiplied together. And uh, it's always going to be this way when we're using integration by parts. It's going to be some function f of x times another function g of x. Uh, so we can use this acronym, late, light. <laughs> I don't know how you'd pronounce that. Um, but what this stands for is logarithmic functions, inverse trig functions, algebraic functions, trig functions, and exponential functions. So log, anything with log or ln, uh, inverse trig functions, any arc, you know, any inverse type, sine, cosine, tangent, any of those are going to be the second ones. Then algebraic functions are going to be anything x cubed, uh, 1 over x cubed, um, 
trig functions are going to be any cosine, sine, anything like that, and then exponential, anything e to the x, 2 to the x type of functions. So if we were given, let's say we needed to find the integral. Oh, where did that come from? Okay, it's gone. Say we're going to do the integral of x squared sine x. So what do we have here? I better put a dx to make it right. I've got an algebraic function, and I have a trig function. So in my little acronym up here, it all goes in order. So whichever comes first is going to be my u. So algebraic functions come before trig functions, so I'm going to take u and set it equal to x squared. Okay. Uh, let's say that I was given the integral of x squared times the natural log of x. Well, what do I have here? I've got an algebraic function, and then I also have a logarithmic function. So logarithmic functions are first, so now I'm going to choose u to e be the natural log of x. Okay, so that's how that acronym can help you figure out what your U should be. All right, let's go for an example. So example number one, all that we want for this one, same for your homework assignment, all they want is what are you going to use for U, and they want you to use the acronym, acronym LIGHT. And uh, so we've got algebraic function here, and we also have a trig function. So we are going to set our algebraic function to our u. So u is going to equal x cubed. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and try all this with an example, for example number two. Uh, so we've got our acronym that we have to follow. First of all, we need to choose our u value. So we've got an algebraic function and we have an exponential function. Exponential functions are the very last, so algebraic definitely comes in front of exponential. So we are going to choose u to equal 4x. And I'd suggest setting them up the same way every time. So let's write our u here, and then to the right and a little below, I'm going to write my dv. So everything else has, everything has to be included. So we already included 4x for u, so everything else has to be in the dv. So e to the 2x dx on that one. Okay, so now derivative of u du is equal to 4 dx, and the integral of v is equal to 1 half e to the 2x. So that has to do with your u substitution. If you want to work with that on the side, figure, remember what that is, you can. I'm running a little late on time here, so I'm going to hurry through this. So we had the integral, this is our formula, the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, so we've got u, which is 4x, times v, which is 1 half e to the 2x, minus the integral of v, which is 1 half e to the 2x, times dv, du, which is 4 dx. So let's simplify that. We have 2x e to the 2x minus 2 e to the integral e to the 2x dx. And then we've already done this integral. It's right here, 1 half e to the 2x. And a lot of times it seems like you end up repeating yourself. Uh, so 2x e to the 2x minus 2 times 1 half e to the 2x. And then just clean that up and make sure we didn't put in a plus c. So we've got 2x e to the 2x minus e to the 2x. And we're done.